Hi, I'm Deb Johnson, and welcome back to Our Time to Quilt. This has been an exciting week. I cannot tell you how gratifying it is to see your response, to see you subscribe. I love reading your comments. Um, I can't wait to see the projects you're working on. I've been promised at least one. So, um, thank you so much. Your welcome to me has been wonderful. And I've got so many ideas running around in this big noggin of mine. So, I'm very excited about this new venture. Uh, let's see. How was your weekend? I hope you had a better one than I did. Do you see this little quilt hanging on the wall behind me? It's a little cute little quilt called Playdate. And I cannot remember the designer or what site, but it's a free pattern that's out there as a block. Oh, it's a block of the month. So when you look for it, look under Playdate block of the month and you should be able to find it. But it's a really cute little quilt. Well, it had been on my frame and I thought, as I always do. Oh, I'll have plenty of time to get this off before the trunk show. So Saturday and Sunday, I'm working 10, 12 hours a day trying to get this quilt done. Do you ever get like hyper-focused? And instead of thinking, hmm, I think the trunk show can manage without this one little quilt. I mean, it's a cute quilt. Don't get me wrong. But I was hyper-focused. So instead of taking my time to prepare and getting enough rest and spending time with Mark and the dogs, I was frantic on the quilt. I, I've got to learn to rethink these things sometimes. Anyway, but Monday night, we had the best time. My daughter went with me. I have two daughters who I really tried to turn into quilters, but nope, they've gone to the dark side. They're knitters. Even my oldest daughter, Becky, her, her daughter, my granddaughter, I started teaching her to sew at four and put her on my quilt frame at five. Nope, she's a knitter now at 13. So I'm just going to have to, you know, my, now my grandson, if he can deal, if he can work with the sewing machine, because it's a machine, then he loves to sew carrying bags for his Legos and his cars. <laughs> But I don't have a quilter in the bunch, so I'm glad you're here. Anyway, we went to see the Durham Orange Quilt Guild. What a lovely guild. Large guild in Chapel Hill. Chapel Hill is beautiful. It's the home to the um, University of North Carolina. And it is gorgeous. It's like it's a city of its own. Um, but the Quilt Guild... Oh, hi, Sean! And I think the lady I met, Bev, and the wonderful president of that group. What a warm, loving group. And I felt so comfortable there. I hated to leave. Um, I, you know, they had a display of these quilts. And they asked if they were in my way. And I said, not at all. And they said, those are our charity quilts. Well, I was amazed. You can tell a lot by the heart up. Uh, you can tell a lot about the heart of a group through their charity works and the level of quality in their charity. And th they were just beautiful. I was honored to have them hanging there. And uh, But it was just a, a lovely group. Oh, and you won't believe who was there. Deb Tucker. who Deb Tucker of the Lemoyne Star Rulers. She comes up with these really great rulers and these easy shortcuts to make difficult patterns and so I got all excited and hollered out ah it's Deb Tucker <laughs> but I love meeting people in the business people who I've benefited from their um, ingenuity and hard work I love it so that was a lot of fun and I had told you last week we were going to do a studio tour and then I got home. Well, we had to drive home in a horrible fog Monday night. So I didn't get home till 1030. And uh, at times the fog, I couldn't see 100 feet in front of me. So it kind of wore me out. Um, so anyway, I uh, thought yesterday I would get up and come down here and I'm going to clean this room. And No, I didn't. I kind of caught up with emails and dozed at the computer. <laughs> Sorry. 
<laughs> but anyway, but I'm here today because I told you I was going to do something today. And this is not going to be my normal kind of video, but I've got some exciting things to tell you and some exciting things to show you. And since the number one comment I got was about the landscape quilts, I'm going to work, we're going to do some quick work on the landscape quilts. Now, should I tell you the exciting thing? Oh, what the heck? I'll tell you first. I'm working on it and Mark, my intrepid electronics and uh, video manager, is looking into what I need to do to do a live feed on YouTube. And I know I'm approved, and so it's just figuring out the few little logistics. So, drum roll please. Oh, no drummer. Well, we're going so this Sunday, February 25th, I believe, yes, the 25th, at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we'll be doing a live feed. So I'm so excited. Um, and what I'd like you to do is get a sewing project. And, you know, if you don't really have a sewing project, if you have a knitting project, I know. But if you have a knitting project, crochet project, even if you have a painting, you know, that you're working on, whatever, cross stitch, whatever it is, come join us and let's talk. The neat thing is, um, I'll have my laptop up. So if you email me, and I'll give you my email address during that, and if you email me, I can show people the pictures of what you're working on. I can, we can kind of chat through the email. So that would be a lot of fun. And Michelle, we'll get to sew together, sort of. <laughs> so, um, so anyway, that's going to be on YouTube, live feed, Sunday, February 25th, 3 p.m. So put something in the crock pot and plan to have fun for a good hour. 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Now, don't worry if you can't join me. I'm going to make sure that I can take our live feed and convert it to a video on the site. So don't, don't fret. All right. Well, let me see. So I'm hoping by Sunday... I'll have the room cleaned enough that you can see the studio tour and a couple of my larger quilts. Um, I'd like to share those with you. I can't share my whole trunk show because uh, I still like getting jobs and going to visit groups. I can't show you all my secrets. But anyway, oh, and on Sunday during the live feed, I found a project I would love to work on with you. And it's a shamrock table runner. I saw it on the quilt show. I subscribed to their email and it's a free pattern. It's out there, a free tutorial. And I thought, oh, let's work on it together. So if you would like, I mean, it's, we'll be able to get it done most likely by Sunday. So especially if you start out and have your squares, you have to have a good number, like 109 one and a half inch squares of different kinds of greens for your shamrocks. But it's very straightforward. You make little nine patches, sew little strips, and then cut out the template. And, they, and um, I'll show you the site. I'll list it below when I download this, um, this video. And I think that'll be our main focus of that's going to be what I'm working on. You can work on whatever you want, but if you if you want to work on this, that way if you have any questions or run into any problems, we can work on them together. So if you look up Shamrock Table Runner, especially if you see something about the quilt show listed, and it, it and it's a tutorial, and it'll have the the fabrics you need, and this is a scrappy. I mean, don't go out and buy anything. This is all scrappy. You could even scrap the white background if you didn't have a half a yard or so. So, but I think that'd be a lot of fun to work on. And St. Patrick's Day is coming up. So we'll be able to actually have something for St. Patrick's Day. That'll be fun. All right. So first, what I'm going to do today is I am going to show you a few of my quilts. And then we're going to do a little work on the landscape quilt. I'm going to give you lots of ideas and kind of show you how, I want to show you more of how I work on things. You know, I do like videos and shows where they show you things, but sometimes 
I feel like they skip steps that would help me understand better how to do it. It's like, how do they all of a sudden come up with something beautiful? And so I'm going to kind of, th this today being kind of a different kind of show, I'm just going to kind of walk you through some of my processes and see if that helps you. And anybody who's working on a landscape quilt, please feel free to show me your progress. But before we talk about any more landscape quilts, let me show you a few quilts. All right. So first one I'll show you, I did this last year at the Myrtle Beach Quilt Party. And I took a class by Sue Edmondson. Um, she's in North Carolina. And I think down more near Charlotte area. And very, very creative, has a fun spirit. So if you get a chance to take a course, uh, a class from her, please do it. And she even gave us, whoop, there's a little deer charm, a little silver deer charm. She gave us that. She, she just really helped. She brought in supplies that we could use in her class. Very generous teacher. So this is what I made with her. And this hangs on my frame room door upstairs. So I enjoy this. But you know what I found out? I'm not much of a hand embroiderer. So it was fun, and from time to time I'll do it. One of the things I do that's similar to this is I like to make like um, little um, prayer flag type things or little things you wear. And uh, for me, it's more just let the person know if I give it to them, I'm thinking of you and I care about you. So that's the Sue Edmondson design I, I took from I made at her class this is something to show you a little bit about my thread painting and this is what they call the nickname for this is the God's Eye Nebula and it's out in space and my mark loves anything to do with space and NASA all it he'll sit and watch the NASA channel yeah so <laughs> but anyway but I am interested in doing my first series so, I've been gathering things, gathering images. Oh, the images that came back from the Hubble telescope. I've got a whole folder of those. So, I'll be doing more of these as time goes on. Now, let's see. Oops, hold on. I dropped something. Well, I dropped them. There it is. Okay. I was camping this past September, and I camp at Car Lake. Love it. Beautiful freshwater lake. Corps of Engineers run, and you camp within, you know, 30, 50 feet from the water, and it's like you have a waterfront property, you know, for $25 a night. Can't beat it. And I did this in September. I was working with ink tents, pencils, and the little ink tents. I don't they look like a pastel, if you've ever done any artwork with pastel. So I was working on this. I didn't plan on doing thread painting, so I didn't take any stabilizers. So I don't know if you can tell, but I stabilized it with paper towels. So <laughs> it's not the best stabilizer job, but you know, I just started messing with it. And I couldn't quite get the paints to do the brilliancy of the sunset of the lake. So I pulled out all my threads and started thread painting it. So if you'll see, that's thread painting. But isn't that fun? Isn't it fun? So this was just supposed to be a little throwaway. I'm going to frame this and put it up. I, I've kind of become fond of it. So this is um, this next project. We had a ugly fabric challenge. And the fabric I chose was or was given to me, was an orange background with green worms, like gummy worms on it. Real ugly. <laughs> but this is what I made with it. And like Bonnie Hunter says, the fabric's still ugly. You haven't cut it small enough. So I just love these kind of images. And this is a whole bunch of applique, raw edge applique. Not much thread painting, but I did use... Um, I tried to mostly use the fabrics for shading and things, but I did touch it up with a little bit, some uh, fabric markers and things like that. But Ink Tense pencils are wonderful. They're a fabric ink, and when you go to buy them, like if you get them on Amazon is where I got mine, make sure you get the tin that has the peacock on it, because Ink Tense also makes a regular colored pencil 
but and you know what Sunday when we have our live feed I'll have them over here and show you but you want the special fabric pencils that when you touch them with water or a gel medium they bloom with color and I learned from Jeannie, thank you Jeannie, that water is not the best thing to, to use with them because it makes the color run and bleed. It's better to use a gel medium. And I was talking to somebody not long ago and she said she uses aloe gel, like gets a bottle from Walmart and uses that and it works wonderfully. So, um, but they're wonderful because then they don't leave any heavy coating like a fabric, heavy fabric paint were. They really are more of a dye or a, um, yeah, or an ink. And, um, but they're made in England and they're wonderful and they last a long time. Uh, another little hint, it's better to have an electric pencil sharpener because I have found that if I use just a hand pencil sharpener it eats them up and you know I don't want to just crunch away expensive pencils but anyway but they're wonderful you heat press them they're set good to go all right here is another quilt from a class I took at Myrtle Beach quilt party in January this I took about three or four years ago and was taught by Judy Lilly Miss Judy Lilly now, I kind of got crazy, went nutso with all the thread painting, and that's yarn that is supposed to be the stamens in there, but I enjoyed making that. This is a, from another class I took at Myrtle Beach, and this is called Beach Cottages, and I found you can Beach Cottages Paint by Design, Paint by Number is the name of her pattern company. And it might have been an Etsy. I will, I will list the link to this because it's only an $8.50 pattern and it's wonderful. Now it's not something you do overnight, but it's big. Let me see if I can get back and show you this. It's pretty big. Okay. So I know you can't see all of it, but it's a fun, fun quilt. Miss Amy Griffin taught me how to um, make it, and but it took me about two years to finish it. And I ended up doing, I played with it. This was like a base, it was paper piecing, but I found, I collected. This is a little button. Is that the cutest little palm tree button? And somewhere on here there's, sunglass buttons and then I collected all kinds of different prints and like put a little sailboat on this house or is that that's a buoy pardon me and um, but had so much fun and down at the bottom on the beach I put shell buttons and shell appliques couldn't find any seagulls oh I made some I made some surfboard appliques couldn't find any seagulls so I printed some out on fabric and put those on there and that worked just fine but I had so much fun making this and it's it's a fun quilt to look at because there's so much to find I mean I did banners for an applique and I had a lot of fun with this all right so there's that one here's a sweet little one I thought I'll show you these quilts before I put them away so, and this is only a fraction. I've got two laundry baskets full over there under the table. But to here is, this you can find online, but unfortunately it's from Sulky, the thread people. The only pattern I was able to find online is in Danish. So, I, I don't know if you can get it translated. The measurements are probably going to give you a little bit of trouble but this was so much fun and I took and found some of my oh gotta show you this this is so cute this is a little needle book is that cute I just made that I had such fun I, I just love playing with some of these things but I had old snaps old buttons things you don't know what to do with that put on here even a little heart from my granddaughter Charlotte is there but I had some homemade lace that I made for it see the crocheted lace and little antique lace things that was a lot of fun 
but it's called I Love Sewing, and it's a sulky, S-U-L-K-Y pattern. Good luck with that. Then a few years ago, I belonged to a group, and they had a garden challenge. Well, at the time, I looked, you know, it, was my, it wasn't this house, but I looked out the window, and my garden really didn't look good. So I did an accurate quilt of what my garden actually looked like. So I've got worms eating things and bugs, and I've got a chipmunk eating something else, and there's a snail there. <laughs> I had so much fun making this. All right, this is an earlier quilt of mine. This I probably made, who, 10, 12 years ago. And it is, I made the fans and used an antique lace and then did broidery purse, broidery, broidery purse, which is, it come, it, it translates out to Persian embroidery. And it's what people used to do a couple hundred years ago where fabric was very expensive. So they would buy a small amount of a chintz, nicely printed, beautiful piece of fabric, cut out the designs, and then place them on a cheaper piece of fabric so they could have a fancy, um, fa fancy bedspread. Now, the colors I found were too bright, so I just bleached it. Rinsed out really, really good. <laughs> Try to neutralize that bleach so it doesn't keep working. But anyway, I enjoyed making this. And it's not perfectly straight. It's not perfectly symmetrical. But I love it. So, I was into peacocks during this. I went through a couple years of peacock love. So Here is a quilt that I got. And I, I um, sadly was divorced after almost 30 years of marriage. Um, but... Don't worry, I've got a new life going strong. So, and it, and you know, things happen for a reason. And I can honestly say I'm in a better place. So that's nice. But this is a quilt I made for myself. And this is a Phoenix Rising. And I kind of just thought, I want to celebrate my new life. Because I just picked this place off a map, didn't know a soul here, and said, that's where I'm moving. So here I am. But um, this has a whole lot. This has thread painting, hand thread painting, believe it or not. See all the hand painting, hand threading, or hand sewing. And then um, to make it look shadowy, it's got a little bit of the uh, tall tool on it. And a little bit of beading. So that's that. Then I'm going to have to back up for this one. This was another... Myrtle Beach class. Boy, I think y'all are going to have to check out the Myrtle Beach Quilt Party. If you go online, Myrtle Beach Quilt Party, you'll find it. So, this I made, and I think the woman's name was Tina Roth, who taught me this lovely, lovely lady. This is, I'm sure most of you recognize, it's a Barcello pattern. But, believe it or not, made with only two fabrics. Now actually I used three because I wanted colors on either side of my inset. But two fabrics. And you can do that because it's made with gelato ombre fabric. And if you cut it right then you get that extreme from black black to white. And I've taught that a couple times. It's a lot of fun. Here's an early... When I say early, I mean 10, 15 years ago, quilt I made. And the fun thing about this quilt is it has buttons on it that I made from polymer clay. So those are supposed to be my holly berries. So I kind of like mixing things up. Now one thing I can tell you about this quilt, there's not quite enough contrast for that center star. But like I say, I still love it. All right, here's another quilt. Tina Roth taught this class also. And it is called, it's a Ricky Timms design. Oh, what's the back called? Convergence quilt. And then I love the 3D cubes on it. Are they fun or what? So this is a lot of fun. And as you can see, it hasn't, I haven't finished binding it. And it still goes to the trunk show. I'm real life. You don't get any put-ons with them. This is probably 
tied from one of my all-time quilt favorite quilts we had a rooster and his name was Rex after my father which means King and this quilt based on a photograph at dawn on a farm that my daughter took I, I've got a daughter who's a farmer gal and so the background was from her photo and then I put on Rex and yes those are real feathers his tail feathers are real no animals were harmed in the making of this quilt. He was, he was molting and I just ran around and grabbed him up. You'll notice down on the stump, yep, that's real lichen. I just glued it on. And lots of thread painting, like his legs are thread painted, his body is thread painting. And I had a lot of fun making this. All right, and then one more for now. And I will, I'll show you a couple more Sunday. All right, the last one I'm going to show you today. I took a class in Pennsylvania from Miss Marjan Klupfel. She's from the Netherlands, very talented lady, and she taught this quilt. Now, I never follow the directions all the way much, and so instead of just having a few of the sepals in the sunflowers uh, three-dimensional, I decided to make all of them three-dimensional and I loved it and my leaves the leaves are three-dimensional and you just tack them in place and these were painted with the pastels so this and, and you can see I've got minky fabric for the seed heads and I did beading give shimmer I did decorative yarns for the edges I had so much fun making this well the first one I made I gave to my daughter-in-law so I had to make a second one for me so and look what I did with the minky I tried to sew I'm trying to think of the the, the there's a, a mathematical equation that goes with the organization of the sunflower seeds. But right now I can't think of it. I can't remember it. Now, my butterflies are a little flattened. But what I did, I made these butterflies by putting soluble stabilizer in a hoop, drawing out with a permanent marker, and then thread painting. And what is, look, I'll let you see up a little closer. See my little, that, it kind of washes it out a little bit. It's a little more sparkly. Yeah, it's much brighter and more sparkly, but that washes it up. But what I did is then I cut loose the excess stabilizer when I was done. See, I've even got, through the thread painting, I've even got his little antenna, little antennas. But anyway. Then I took and cut it out, and then I barely just rinsed it. Didn't wash it really out. I just kind of rinsed out some of it, and then squeezed it between paper towels. And it's real stiff. And the wonderful part about that is I can mold these, pose them, whichever way I want. So I made the th three butterflies, and I love this. And this normally goes on my wall right there. But uh, I will get it put back up soon. All right, so that was that. Now, I don't want to take you take up too much more of your time. Let's talk a little bit about these landscape quilts. And don't forget Sunday at 3. But let's talk a little bit about these landscape quilts. Um, people think sometimes that artists just have these visions in their head and they just get their canvas and whoosh, paint it all out. It's not the way it happens. And by telling you this, I'm hoping that it will make you feel a little less nervous about the process of art and maybe you're an artist already and, and then that's great but I always worry about the people who think oh I could never do that because you really can so what I was going to tell you is if you I'm sure you've seen the proverbial person standing out near a field with their easel and their paints <clears throat> and their painting while they're looking at their subject or the proverbial live model that everyone's standing in the art class painting so real artists have to look at something okay so don't let that worry you at all and um but what i was going to tell you if you 
what I do is I, if I know I'm like, a, like the space theme, I've been collecting photos. And what I do is I go online. The internet is the most amazing thing. Absolutely amazing. Okay, let me back this up just a second. Um, I want to bring up a folder. Hold, let me close this. Hold on just a second here. Anyway, I'll talk to you while I'm doing this. Um, what I was going to tell you is I go to Google and I type in um, images of a rusty truck. And I always use the word images because photos are photos, but you but if I type in images, it could be artwork, it could be graphics. And what I do is I look at a lot of stuff. And then when I find some things that I like, I've got to put these on. If I find something I like, then what I do is I put them in a folder that I can find in Windows, my pictures, and I put them in a folder where I know I can find them. So, let me, I'm having a little technical problem here. Um, let me see. Okay, so, I, I'm sorry, I'm done. But what I do is I find the picture, I save it into a folder. And then from there, I take the favorite in that folder and, and call them down again and name the folder with whatever exact work I'm doing and put just the ones that I really want to use. So, you know how I told you last time that the fabric that shows more movement and texture that I really wasn't sure about that because I didn't think fields just started and stopped? Well, I found some actual images that said, oh yeah, they could. You could have, it's like a golf course where you go from the mown area to the rough. And I noticed, I found a photo of sheep grazing and it looks like part of the field had been very grazed. And then there was this rough section. It's probably rocky and stuff like that. And it had more pronounced grass. So, but anyway, let me find this really quick, please. Give me just a second. My pictures. And a teaching folder. I have these folders I have them put in. And let me let you see this here. Yep, 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 yep. Okay. And then I'll go down to landscape. Come. Now, you know, I had this open, but of course I ended up accidentally closing it. Teaching folder. Let me try landscape. All right. Here we go. Favorite for landscape. And then I put a second folder for video landscape. So that way today I know huh, exactly what we're going to do. So I'll open this up and you can even hit slideshow. Let me do that because then that way you get to see. I know, remember I talked about putting a creek or a pond or a stream across the field. 